you and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about the mysterious, undeciphered notes of Ricky McCormick. Ricky McCormick's body was found in 1999 with notes that remain undeciphered to this very day. His death and the notes remain an unsolved mystery. So who was Ricky McCormick? He was born on June 14th, 1958. He was known for concocting tall tales and his displays of unusual behaviour. It appears as though, by most accounts, Ricky was not entirely literate, and he was dyslexic. Which is going to be a lot of fun when we get into his notes. His own mother said he was, you know, not altogether there. Ricky was a high school dropout who held multiple addresses in Missouri and Illinois. He worked a number of jobs, moving a lot, manual labour mostly. In 1992, Ricky McCormick was arrested for statutory rape, having fathered two children with a 14-year-old girl. He ultimately pleaded guilty to these charges, and served 13 months in jail. Ricky fathered four children over the years. Before his death, Ricky took at least two trips via bus to Orlando, Florida, in 1999. He had allegedly brought back baseball-sized Ziploc bags of marijuana from Florida for the brother of the owner of the gas station where Ricky McCormick worked. He experienced chest pains and shortage of breath the week before he died, severe enough for him to check into the ER. Although he admittedly smoked at least a pack of cigarettes a day since he was 10, and typically drank more than 20 caffeinated beverages a day. The healthy lifestyle. On June 30th, 1999, Ricky McCormick's body was discovered between a cornfield and a road in St. Charles County, Missouri. The area his body was discovered in was a known criminal dumping ground. 41-year-old Ricky hadn't yet been reported missing. Ricky was verified to be alive only five days earlier, getting a checkup at the hospital. An employee at a gas station that Ricky frequented also claimed to have seen him on the day of his death. Ricky's body was discovered more than 20 miles from his home. He didn't drive, he didn't own a car, there was no public transport in the area. Also, Ricky's body was badly decomposed which was odd because the medical examiners believed he'd only died three days before his body was found, and the weather hadn't been that warm. Authorities suspected that Ricky was killed elsewhere before his body was dumped. The medical examiner classified Ricky's death as undetermined, after a autopsy and a toxicology exam were finished. However, the police considered it a homicide. After all, he was found in a known criminal graveyard and his murder remains unsolved to this very day. Now his death, it is a mystery, but it's not the one we're interested in in this video. There was a series of notes found with him that remain undeciphered to this very day, which may or may not hold the clues to his death. Now, after his death was reported, nothing about the notes was mentioned. It wasn't until 12 years later when the FBI finally posted a notice on their website asking for help in deciphering the messages, that anyone became aware there were undeciphered notes to begin with. His family, nobody knew anything about this. Investigators believe the notes found with Ricky McCormick were written within three days before his death. So. Let's take a look, shall we? Ricky's family said they never knew him to write in code. He could barely write at all. The only thing he could do was like chicken scratch scribble. That's what they said. The notes are obviously a complete jumble. 
Don Olson, chief of the FBI's Cryptanalysis and Racketeering Records Unit, said, Breaking the code could reveal the victim's whereabouts before his death, and could lead to the solution of a homicide. It doesn't happen often that we have an unsolved cipher of this length and significance. The characters are not random. There are many E's, for example, that could be used as a spacer. There are many characteristics that suggest it could be solved, many patterns. The problem is, we just don't know why it is not solvable. And I mean, this is the FBI, you know, you'd think they would be able to solve this, but nope. No one knows who wrote it, but most cipher experts agree it's not random. It is a very sophisticated code. Dan Olson believes the notes to have been written by Ricky himself, but who really knows, perhaps Ricky was much more savvy than many people believed him to be. Are the messages some kind of shorthand that he invented? One that only he himself would understand? Unfortunately, there are no existing samples of Ricky's handwriting. As a result, there is nothing to compare the note with to determine if Ricky was the author. The most recognizable pattern is NCBE. Those four letters in that order are in the notes. A lot. Some have commented, considering Ricky's potential involvement with drug trafficking, it is possible that this is an uneducated drug dealer's shorthand. It breaks down who he sells to, how much he sells, a short description of how he knows them, recognizes them, or if he doesn't know them. Suggested meanings of NCBE, if it is indeed a shorthand code, includes variations of no cash being exchanged, no callback, E being a throwaway letter, as suggested by Dan Olson. Another theory is that the notes indicate prescription drug usage and corresponding dates and times. The messages were a diary of his medical journal, suggesting what pharmaceutical drugs he was taking, when he was taking them, what he was taking them for, that maybe he had manic episodes, was bipolar. Some of the attempted deciphering of the notes believe that this is what they are. Chronic depression in September, really severe at the start of December in 1974, no cause of the episode, stuff like that. Now there is no known evidence that Ricky was bipolar, though he was known to tell tall tales and had a history of unusual behaviour. There is also no evidence that he had prescriptions for any of the medicines he referenced, but then again he dealt in drugs, so that wouldn't be hard for him to get, you know, illegally. Another theory is that the killer themselves wrote the note as a red herring to distract police. Likely it's not even solvable, it's just there to take attention away from maybe other clues that were there at the scene of the crime. Or was Ricky simply the courier of the note and that's why he was killed? Was he relaying messages for shady people? He already was involved in drugs, did prison time, and happened to be dumped in a known criminal graveyard. Gregory Lamar Cox, a high-level drug dealer who operated in Ricky's neighborhood, was a suspect in several homicides. In fact, a confidential informant also told police that Knox was responsible for the murder of a black man who worked at a gas station and whose body was dumped. It was also reported that Ricky's girlfriend and aunt noticed that Ricky seemed frightened when he returned from Orlando. Did he know he was in danger? That he was going to end up in a dumping ground pretty soon? Honestly, I think the notes are shorthand written by someone who is half illiterate and half dyslexic. But if the notes are actually decipherable, that's a completely different question. The FBI had them for 12 years and couldn't crack them. They finally had to make it public to ask the public for help, and still, nothing. But then that's why I make these videos. Maybe you can decipher them and help the FBI out. You never know. The notes found in Ricky McCormick's pocket are in the top three of uncracked coded communications. Above which are the notes by the Zodiac Killer and a note from the Taman Shud mystery, which we'll get to 
in a later video at some stage. The Ricky McCormick mysterious messages notes, they're up there and if they would have been cracked, I feel like they would have been cracked by now. I mean, you never know. That message could be the secret to something really important to unsolved mysteries, Ricky's own death, or it could be shorthand for a shopping list. Who knows? Thanks for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I'll see you as always in the next video. My gift.